Today's an exciting day, one I've been waiting for for a long time, well over a year, probably close to a year and a half. We're finally going to dyno the Crown Rick and turn that thing up. So, been running in on about 16 pounds of boost for the past year and a half now. Working out some kinks, we've had some transmission issues, had an issue where I lifted a head, so I put a new set of heads on it, some fresh head gaskets, OEM bolts, and it's been in good shape. I've been thrashing on it pretty good. So I drove this thing across the state of Michigan towing a jet ski. I mean, it's in good shape. It's ready to go. So I'm going to unload it off the trailer, back it on Boost Addicts Dyno. We're down here, Gallatin, Tennessee. My friend Matt Sanford is going to be tuning on this thing today. Go check out his YouTube channel. Uh, he's got a bunch of great info for tuning, stock ECU stuff, Holly stuff, all sorts of good stuff. So hopefully make some big power today, or we're going to make a big mess if we don't. What a good car, man. Love this thing, most of the time. Back her off. All right, we're back down the dyno. And for those of you who haven't seen any videos on this thing, I'll give you a quick overview of it. So 2006 Ford Crown Victoria. It's got a 4.8 liter in it. Uh, it's got Gen 4 rods and pistons, stock heads. Uh, it's got uh, Brian Tooley, the uh, LS9 style head gaskets in it, stock bolts, fast intake, Bosch 210 injectors, VS7875 Gen 3 turbo with the 1.25 exhaust housing on it. Uh, that's about it for the main stuff. For fuel, we're running E85 in this. It's set up for flex. It's got two uh, 450 fuel pumps in the back. It's got the Holly Hooker hot side on it. Custom cold and hot side. We've got a cutout down there, four inch. It's got a turbo 400 trans brake in it. Holly dash, this is on Holly Terminator X. So, been, uh, been running this thing and its current configuration, like I said, for a little over a year. And now the time has come to, to turn it up. So, excited to see what this thing's gonna make. The dyno that it's on here at Boost Addicts, uh, it's kind of a, what you'd call a heartbreaker dyno. It typically reads a little bit lower than, you know, most other dynos, but uh, it's always cool when you can tell someone your car makes a lot less power than theirs and well, then you gap them. So I'm cool with that. I care about what this thing's gonna run on the quarter mile. So if we don't uh, make a mess today with this thing, plan is to take it to the track tomorrow if we can find a drag pack for it because these things aren't gonna hook up. I know from experience. I'm just glad to be one step closer to having this thing wrapped up in its final form. Unless, like I said, we make a big mess today. So that would be unfortunate, but we've got the right tools here to tune this thing safely and make a lot of power with it. So we'll show you guys some of that. Uh, there's some other preliminary stuff that we've got to do. We're going to check the static timing on this thing. And you guys might say, oh, LS engine, uh, what do you mean check time? And there's no distributor. We'll go through that. It's one part of the equation and doing this the right way so we can safely turn this thing up. All right, the car is up in the air. And right now what we're doing is finding true top dead center. And we have a piston stop in cylinder number one. Uh, you can kind of see it up there. Let me see if I can zoom in. Right, right there. So that's gonna allow us to put a mark on the balancer and I have this Motion Raceworks timing pointer right here. So we're just going to verify that what the Holly thinks is actual top dead center matches what is actual top dead center. And if it doesn't match, uh, we're able to offset that. So this is so when we add timing in the ECU, we're not actually adding more than, well, what we think. So that's how you end up with uh, some piston pudding. So. Again, this is just one step to ensure that uh, this is gonna be a safe setup and we're not gonna melt it down. Mike rotated the engine around and is just widening that scribe a little bit. Make it a little more legible, then we'll get a paint marker and mark it with that and should be able to pick it up with the timing light. So Mike's got the timing light hooked up. It's tough to see in there. So 
He said 18 degrees is about a degree off. Okay. So Matt's got the laptop hooked up and Mike was showing 18 degrees. Or were you showing 18 degrees in here? Yeah, so what you do is you log in online to the car and you'll come over here to your sync button and just to the right of it, you'll see this drop down arrow and you'll see enable static timing check. So you'll click it and you can just type in whatever value you want. You want. So I knew it would idle good at 18 degrees. So I typed in 18 degrees, you hit set and the pitch of the car changes. And now the car is completely locked down at 18 degrees. So Mike verified it. We're within a degree on, on our timing marks. So then once you're done, you just get clear and timing goes back to normal. Nice. So you're content with that? You're not going to yeah. offset it at all? No, or? no need okay. to offset. We're within a degree. We're good. Yeah. What's the, uh, like, what's the farthest out you've seen it I've before? I've seen 13 degrees off. That's, that's, that's brutal. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. So that's like you set it at 18 degrees and it's actually at 31 degrees. Yeah, right yeah. in that situation well, so it was actually opposite it was actually at five degrees oh okay yeah so we were wondering why the thing wouldn't make any power right that's why well it's a little safer at least could yeah. could have been worse yeah. <laughs> well with our timing verify it's time to strap this thing down on the dyno make a little bit of a pull with it so we're going to be doing frequent plug checks on this thing to ensure that we're very safe as far as where the timing marks on the ground strap of the plug are uh, we might need to go to a colder heat range on the plug. We're running BR7 EFs in this very popular plug for turbo uh, applications. Been working great at this power level, but as I said, this thing's going to the moon. So we might need to go a little bit colder in the plug department to keep things safe. And then outside of that, I mean, we've got good fuel. We've got a good fuel system. The only direction from here is up. So let's strap this thing down, make a pull with it. So first pull, what do you think it's gonna make? 16 pounds ish. Yeah, 16 pounds on this dyno, I'm gonna say 530. 530? Which engine horsepower, what would you put that at? Like 700. 700? Pretty decent. I, when I rode in it, it felt like a 650, 600 horsepower car. So if it made that, it'd be pretty cool to start with, obviously. We want, we need big numbers. All right, so it's your first time seeing this car ever, which is surprising, but what's your what's your initial impressions of it? Did I do a decent job? Um, I, you did a great job. Just the next car you buy needs to be from Tennessee. I respect that. That's, <laughs> that's a good opinion. I like that. Yeah. This looks like it was from SpongeBob's city. <laughs> <laughs> I like SpongeBob. I don't know what he's trying to get at there, but... All right, guys, just about to get this thing fired up. Like I said, Check out Matt Sanford on YouTube. He's uh, doing a lot of good videos on Holly and factory ECU tuning, and is overall just a really good dude. So give him a follow. Always has helped me out with tuning these cars the past couple years. Good dude. Let's give this thing a rip. Also, take a guess at what you think the final number of this thing is gonna be. Leave that below in the comments. Curious to see what you guys think. So this first pull is just gonna be on 16 pounds like I've been running it for the past year and a half. We're going to see what she'll do. First rip, baby. that 551 I guess that was the last uh, vehicle that was on the dyno so yeah 551 470 I'll take that that's a little bit better than 415 <laughs> so this dyno does read about 10% lower compared to other dynos that we've seen so uh, I think my Camaro made 636 on this and then on another dyno it made geez i don't even remember it was close to seven i think it's hard to remember because i pulled it and uh, i don't know so on another dyno this would probably make about 600 to the wheels so pretty good i mean that's what i felt was a 600 to 650 wheel horsepower car driving it so it wasn't too far off so for a first pull pretty happy with that all right so what do you think about that first hit 
It's not bad. I'm seeing a peak of, uh, it's like 14, you can see that right here, 14 and a half PSI. Uh, at that spot, we were 15.9 degrees of timing. Had a little bit extra timing up top, 17.7 .7 or so, but still 14.4. So this, the car right now is making like pound and a half less than what you've seen on the street. Okay. And for it to be making that, I mean, we definitely got some room to grow. Yeah, I like that. Yep. First hit, I mean, pretty pretty drama free. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean that right there. That's enough to go tens all day long. Yeah. So on this dyno at least. Yeah. So but yeah, manifold air temp looks good. Car looks good. I mean, we're only at thirty four percent injector duty cycle. That's nothing. Nope. <laughs> we got all the room left. Yeah. All right. Cool. So what's your plan for the next pull? Um. More boost. I, mean, I feel like that's a pretty simple. You know, no problem. timing change is more boost. Yeah, I think more boost. Okay. And this just has a single Mac valve set up, so it's kind of finicky, right, when it comes to yeah. tuning. It's kind of just a guess to see how it's going to respond to. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So we'll put like, uh, what we'll do is we'll go in and put a plug in it. We'll put a fresh plug in whichever cylinder you want to put a plug in. And, uh, or, or do you want to do a plug check at 16, or this 14 pounds? Nah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, will put a fresh plug in here. We'll throw another, uh, let's just do 10% on duty cycle and see what it does. Okay. I like that. I'll set a boost limiter at like. I don't know, 22, 23 pounds. It shouldn't make that, but right. if it does, we're cool. Yeah. Do we want to leave the air filter hooked up uh, for yeah, now? Let, yeah, let's keep all that stuff okay. just like it is for now. We'll do that test once we're actually moving some airflow. Yeah. This is still baby numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right, this is the second pull. So this is a single back valve for the boost control, so he's putting 10% more into that. Uh, set up like a boost cut type thing in case it goes too high. Also put a new plug in number one cylinder so we can do a plug check after this pull to see where the uh, timing mark is at on the strap. Thank 592, 515. That's solid. Curious to hear what it made for boost, but approaching that 600 number that's pretty good all right that was even better i'm liking what the direction the numbers are going what did you see for boost on that one so that one we're seeing a peak of 17.7 pounds now this tune-up is still the remote tune that i did for rick what a year ago over over, a year, over ago. a year ago yeah so as we start to get up in a higher boost i have low timing in this thing right now so that was 17.7 pounds and that at 17.7 pounds we're at 12.8 degrees of timing and up top, actually, no, I think I saw a blip of 18 pounds. Yeah, 18 pounds, 13 and a half degrees. So still got a bunch of room to grow on timing. Still got a bunch of room to grow on boost. Nice. Yep. Yeah, you can tell it's number one of 4.8 as you tip into it. And then also with that, those low timing numbers, it comes in a little bit slower. But yep. that can be uh, that can be corrected yeah, a little we're, bit. We're just going to keep turning up boost, and then we'll start to worry about timing. Yeah, nice. Yep. Want me to pull that plug right now and take yep. a look at it? Okay. I'm to do that. So I pulled the new plug after that last rip. Can kind of try and focus in on here. Maybe it's not going to focus. Come on. Kind of see our timing mark there. Looking really good. So we're going to put this back in and keep adding boost. All right, this go around is uh, increased timing. So same boost, more timing. to what your LT4 made on this dyno. That's what we yeah, that's what we were just talking about. My Camaro made I think 636, so <laughs> it's 17 is what it ended up being. Uh, so when you add timing, it actually will reduce boost. Uh, so that was 17 pounds, 17 degrees. Okay. So, not bad, especially with the 48. Yeah. Not bad at all. Do you think you're done with timing then or Um, no, what we're going to do is I'll put another 10% and we're going to put a plug in it. Okay. And then so another 10%, maybe it'll come up to like 20, 21 pounds. Yeah. And we'll check the plug 
chop and we may, it may want more timing up there because so basically what I do is, is I'm adding timing but I'm adding it in at the levels that we're going so it still drops off kind of quickly right because worst case scenario if the thing goes to the moon on boost I want it to have no timing up there yeah we haven't been there before yep. you know so yeah everything looks good so let's uh, let's change the plug and throw 10 percent more at it and see what we can do <laughs> <laughs> so we put another new plug in number one we're gonna read the plug after this pull but he put another 10 percent on uh, the Mac valve to hopefully get the boost up a little bit more. See what she makes. smokes 684 wow all right that's a that's a lot <laughs> what'd you see on that Not one bad. it's right at 21 pounds 15 degrees we pulled that plug just a second ago tiny mark looked good so we're still actually we're not even in the bin yet we're just before the bin so everything's looking good air fuel ratio looks good battery voltage looks good oil pressure looks good yeah literally everything looks perfect at the very end of the run we were 86 degrees of manifold air temp um, it actually come up to the, you know, these sensors, they're a little bit slow to react. So it come up as high as 88 and then it just started to fall right back down. So yeah, that's been, I mean, I've gotten some gripe from some people about the placement of the exhaust and the charge plate being relatively close together, but it doesn't seem to really be impacting it that much. I don't think it cares. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. So I'll pull that plug out and take a look at that. And, uh, yep. Yep. Pull the plug. Plug looks good. We'll just stick that plug back in it and we'll go up another 10% or so. I like that. <laughs> All right, we're getting ready to do another pull. So he added 10 more percent duty cycle to the Mac valve. Um, that was 21 pounds on the last pull. So our limitation is going to be 26 pounds because of the two and a half bar map sensor. Uh, so it seems like we're going to max that out today, hopefully. And that's going to be it. So it gives us some you know, room to grow if we want to do something in the future. But we're approaching that level. I'm excited to see what it's going to make. Seven hundred twelve. <laughs> We're approaching two hundred more horsepower than this thing came in here with. Man, this is going to be going to be a fun unit. I'm curious to see what it made for boost this time. Let's go check. Would you see that time? So that's, I'm seeing a peak of twenty three point four pounds. That's seventy percent uh, due cycle on the solenoid. We're at thirteen point six degrees of timing. It's still light on timing. Uh, manifold air temp. Uh, I'm seeing 90 and after the run I had a peak of 93 and it starts to fall off uh, Oil pressure looks good battery voltage looks good clothes look fuel compensation looks good everything still looks great So we still uh, I guess we're gonna keep going. I mean we got another couple pounds. We might as well use them. I like that I mean, why not? <laughs> so, so you said the next next step you should just go to a five bar Map yeah, sensor to not yeah, have I'll any do a five bar map sensor. I mean this honestly with the fuel you guys have in Michigan, I think we could safely run this thing on like 28, 29 pounds before we have to start to worry about flexing the cylinder head. Okay. So, I mean, realistically, it may could take more than that. Like, usually on a race application vehicle, we can usually run them as high as 35 pounds before we start to distort the cylinder head. But yeah, considering you do hood rat stuff, I uh, 28, 29 pounds, yeah, solid. Towing a jet ski, dude. Yeah, we don't yeah. want to. We don't want to stress her out too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, everything looks perfect still. That's awesome. So. And so we're going for more boost again, staying with the same timing. Going to see what it's going to make. So again, we're approaching the the limitation of this two and a half bar map sensor we got. So uh, when I drove it on the street, we were seeing about a pound and a half more compared to what we were seeing on the dyno that first pull. So the street's going to load a little bit more heavy. So we might not actually see that number on the dyno. Uh, maxing out the map sensor might be just under that. We'll see what happens though. <laughs> it 
keeps going up. Okay, another pull, another boost increase. That was like 24 pounds. We're gonna aim for 25. What'd you see after that one? Running out of boost control. So basically I had this thing set up to where if we were able to hit like 25, 25 and a half pounds, it would have been back down to like 80% duty cycle, but it just wouldn't get to it. It's it right here. I'm at 90, 90% duty cycle. And if, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but 90% on a PWM scale is pretty much pinned. So I'm going to go ahead on and stick hundred percent in here. So I don't know if it's going to get any more. We may actually need, if we want more boost, we may need more wastegate spring. But otherwise, everything else is looking good. Manifold air temp looks good. Timing looks good. Um, we're still, I mean, we're 14 degrees on this motor. So according to the plug, everything seems like we can still put more in there. But there's no sense in leaning on this car like it is, unless we're at the racetrack. Like, just to get a dyno number, especially on a low rating dyno. Like, if we were on, like, a hub dyno or something and you want to see a cool number. Yeah. Maybe maybe spice her up, but. I mean, this is a shit ton of power. That's a lot of power. It's a lot. Like, I mean, engine engine horsepower, I mean, 744 on this dyno, what would you say engine horsepower? So I'll is? tell you that a ZL1, I had a ZL1 that made 740 horsepower on this dyno, and it traps 153 miles an hour. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, with with the right converter and this thing, actually, if we get this thing to leave on, like, 12 or 13 pounds, I mean, this no reason why this car can't go nines, if not even deep nines, and maybe even eights, depending on how heavy the thing is. Yeah. Like, I don't know how much one of these weighs, but... It's a, that's a lot of power. So you're looking at, that's like, yeah, like, I mean, well over 800 on a Dynajet. Yeah. So, and for, I mean, a, a essentially unknown 4.8 with a little baby cam in it. I mean, that's, it's pretty rowdy. Yeah. I mean, most of this was like used stuff, used cam, used yeah. intake. I mean, the, the heads are literally nothing special, just stock 862s. But working with you on this thing, I mean, it's just the right combination of the right stuff. Yeah. It, I mean, you don't need something super fancy to make ridiculous power. No, I mean, it's it's very rare for me to have a car on this dyno that makes that kind of power. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, I know I know to, to the internet people that may not seem like a lot, but that's a lot. So so for reference, we're, we got a Bosch 210 injector. So a Bosch 210 injector will make roughly 2,000 horsepower so on ethanol. And uh, we're at 47.2% injector duty cycle. So we're... <laughs> I mean, well, we're up there. Yeah. Like anytime you see a Bosch 210 at 50% duty cycle, you're making, making some steam. Making some steam. Yeah. So. That's yeah. sweet. Everything looks good. So we'll try to pin the gate and just stick it on 100% and whatever it makes, it makes. Maybe we can get it to cross that 750 mark. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, if you want, you you want to pull off the air filter? Yeah, we can talk about that offline. Maybe see what uh, <laughs> see what we want to do with that. I mean. Please. I'm not looking for records, obviously, but okay. I mean, it's also, I'm curious to see what difference it would yeah. make, you know. We, we'd go in and close that exhaust up. <laughs> uh, I don't feel like putting head gaskets in this thing today. <laughs> head gasket delete mod. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so we'll just pin the gate and we'll let her rip. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, it's super cool to have such a, a wide range of boost, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, eight pound on. spring yep. all the way up to maxing out the map sensor. That's yep. That's pretty good for... For this setup yeah i mean that's that's pretty much ideal like you, the only other combinations you get that's even better than that would be co2 but the fact that you have this much this much boost control a lot of times we'll only see like two times wastegate spring yeah so the fact that we're seeing three times wastegate spring i mean that's that's solid yeah and, and especially too because this dyno apparently you, you know you said it made 16 pounds on the street and we only sell 14 and a half pounds so we actually may be able to get that 25 26 pounds out on the street yeah so, Nice. Bye bye, Nittos. <laughs> so just in case you guys want to see, this is the dyno's estimation on flyable horsepower. And that actually lines up perfectly with the fuel flow, like the injector duty cycle on those Bosch 210s. So, I mean, we're, we're pretty much at 1,000 flywheel. Yeah. Which is, I mean, I don't know if you all watch Richard Holdner, but that's about what they make on, you know, between 21 and 24 pounds of good camshaft, good cylinder heads, they'll do 1,000. Yeah. So, Jeez. say we're all over that. So, not bad for a little budget combo. <laughs> Okay, this is probably going to be the last pull, so he's just giving it all of the wastegate duty cycle. It was at 90% before. This is going to be it.
All right, not much of a change on that one, only three horsepower. After that little rip, it's safe to say that the Crown Rick is an absolute animal. So, uh, big thank you to Matt Sanford for tuning this thing and for all the help putting together the recipe for success for this machine, and also Boost Addicts for letting us use their dyno. So, I'm going to get this thing loaded back up on the trailer. Hopefully, going to find a set of dragger radials for this thing tonight or tomorrow morning so we can take it to the track. TBD on whether or not that's going to happen. Hopefully it does. I'd like to see this thing make a pass before the end of the year, and tomorrow's basically the, the last opportunity we have to do that. So uh, appreciate your guys supporting this matter again. Don't forget, check out the membership feature on the channel. Uh, totally optional, but again, it would be very appreciated if you guys uh, could check that out and see if one of the levels uh, yeah, fits what you guys are looking for. Tons of good perks with those. So we'll see you guys in a couple days.